Hi, this is Anil Bharti and we are here at KubeCon in San Diego. And today we have with us Rajiv Kodandapani. You are a technical writer at Linode. Uh, how long have you been at KubeCon? Have you been from day one or when did you arrive here? Well, yes, I've been here from the day one. I came in this, in this week, Sunday. Perfect. Yeah. So that means that you have seen uh, keynotes, you have seen other sessions, you have walked through the booth. What has been your observation so far uh, for this KubeCon? Well, the weather is perfect. Everyone seemed to have enjoyed the warm sunny days. We also had downpour yesterday, which not many enjoyed. But yeah, it's vibrant. And uh, the last KubeCon I attended, we had just about 8,000 people. We are now 12,000 people. Just 8,000 people? <laughs> In Seattle, it was 8,000, 8, yeah. Perfect. So you're also co-chair of you know, usability SIG at CNCF. Uh, tell us about what is the role of this SIG? Yeah. And that's an interesting question because um, the idea is we already have um, people contributing across the globe to the Kubernetes project. So we also see that um, not many people uh, know much about Kubernetes yet. So the idea was um, we should have a usability group that helps user to learn about your product. And after they learn about your product, they also need to recall what they've learned once you recall what you've learned, you should, they are able to perform their task better. And after they perform their task with minimal errors, the confidence increases and you have a great satisfied user. That's the whole idea of having the SIG. And also we, we are working on making it accessible. We are an inclusive community, so we need to have, we are working on making it accessible in all aspects, yeah. Uh, accessibility is something, you know, uh, interesting concept. I was talking to somebody from National Blind Foundation Federation and uh, what he was saying was that accessibility, like, you know, you build a very tall building and then you say it would be a good idea to build a lift or elevator also there. Uh, accessibility is not just for people who are disabled, but actually improve the whole user experience. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. That's exactly what accessibility is all about. It's not about only people who are blind or who are not able to access it. As the word implies, it is for everyone to be accessible, to be able to use it. Yeah. Yeah, when I use Siri, I just talk to it, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, you literally will say, oh, it's for people who cannot see so they can interact, but it just improves the whole overall experience. Absolutely. Right. It helps a lot more than what it was meant to right. help. The, is it for all CNCF projects or specific? No, I have been driving the accessibility for the SIG website documentation. We drafted certain guidelines around it and how you make the website content accessible to the screen readers, yeah. What is the importance of documentation and, you know, when all the new technology are coming and people don't even know <laughs> the new buzzwords, new paradigms, new jargons? Yeah, that's the interesting thing about documentation is that, you know, um, um, in last KubeCon, I think I read about it somewhere in one of the presentation. Nobody writes, nobody reads. But everybody wants documentation. Somebody has to do it. So we do have to have documentation. That's how anybody is going to know about you. Yeah, that's true. Nobody wants to write it. Nobody <laughs> wants to read it. But there still has to be there. What role does a documentation play in, in a project? Because, you know, it's, it's also, it's education. You know, you know, you need to know how certain pieces of a project work. So what role documentation plays in adoption of a project? Yeah. Thank you. So way back in my career, when I just started, one of my CEOs had told, you know, there's no product that is bug free. The only thing I can guarantee to a customer is that it will work the way it is documented. So that's your first product. It's not even the actual product that you're working on. Your documentation is the first product the customer buys. Yeah. So that's how important it is. Right. And it's, it's very well known that developers don't write like to write document because developers like challenges where uh, and documentation is kind of boring, you know. So, uh, but somebody has to write it. So, do you also like kind of you know drive some project or initiatives to get people involved to write documentation? Uh, yes, we have had contributors across the globe um, in Kubernetes community who are working on localization. Mm -hmm. So Kubernetes document, as you already know, it has about 1.4 million views on an average per week. And our localization team has been working on making that content accessible to the local communities. So we have now in about 10 languages the Kubernetes website. Yeah. And documentation is also a way for a lot of people who use a project 
to contribute because not everybody is a coder. I'm not a coder. I cannot, you know, write yes. code. But documentation is one of the ways to contribute. Absolutely. You could contribute. You could be a part of this beautiful community, even if you're not a coder, and contribute to the documentation, which is critical for any project. How, how can somebody get involved if they want? What is, like, for example, uh, as you said, localization, somebody from China or Asia or any part of the world. Uh, so do you have like very clear cut, you know, either uh, where they can go if somebody is using a project and they, they saw, a pro- they're like, hey, this, this is wrong. This is how it should be done. So is there any, any place where they can go? To, how easy you make it for them to start contributing to the documentation? Oh, yeah. Thank you. So the SIG docs team has been very good with that. And that's how we have been able to onboard more than 10 localization projects there now. So um, we did draft early on in 2018 the guidelines about how you could contribute to localize the content. And the guidelines are pretty straightforward and it's easy to onboard people. It's just about, you know, um, joining us on Slack, pinging us, asking, hey, you know what, I want to get started on localizing this document and we have... Um, experienced members who were guiding and walking through the new contributors to start working on it, yeah? And they became the maintainers of it. Yeah, that's what we've been doing, Mm -hmm. yeah. As you said initially, you know, nobody wants to write documentation. Uh, uh, Okay, developers are lazy, they don't want to do it, but there may be a lot of other reasons also. So uh, maybe the, the bar is too high. So can you talk about some of the actual, because you have done yourself, you know, what are the actual challenges, hurdles, that people come across when they, they try their hands in documentation and that just discourages them. And then how you can mitigate those? Yeah, one of the things that intimidates people in writing is that, you know, have I been writing it grammatically right? Is the format right? Is it okay? So I think we are quite flexible that way because it's important that you have the content right right there, what you want to express. And you always have people who can help you out in formatting the content and fitting into how you want. We do have a lot of templates that help them in fitting their content there um, rather than just writing whatever they think about. Or we also encourage writing blogs which they could put in, which need not fit into any formats. Yeah, that's what we've been doing. Or we can do videos also. Yes, videos are absolutely (laughs) one of the things that we have been lately promoting is videos, making videos. That's something everybody enjoys and everybody likes to watch videos as well because it's easier to learn and faster recurling. Yeah, you can recall things faster. And let's just turn the table and we're talking from the contributors point of view. Uh, let's look at from the point of view of projects, you know, mm-hmm. what are the problems that projects face when it comes to documentation, document things? Yeah, some of, th- you have very little contributors for projects. And that's contribution for projects to write document. And that's one of the challenges that most of the projects under CNC, if we have very little trained tech writers who are willing to contribute their time in making the documents better. And that's a big challenge. And I wish more companies encourage their com- tech writers to contribute to the projects that they're using. Yeah, there should be a project, you know, just for uh, content creation. There should be a SIG for that. And yes. then we media companies can come as vendors and help you guys. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm also curious about your own journey. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, can you talk about a, a bit about your own journey that your own evolution as an engineer and why you chose to to this side of the engineering, which is more or less like helping people. Yeah, that's interesting. I must say that um, probably I never got to be doing the cool um, things like developing or programming. And I started off uh, testing and I realized that, um, that, you know, when I was testing, there wasn't enough documentation around it. And that's how I got interested, drawn towards writing content that helps things easier for anybody who is working. And um, yeah, it's been a great journey. So from being an obscure technical writer in India to somebody who is authoring content on a platform that's viewed by 1.4 million viewers is great. Yeah. Okay, this is this is a personal question. Yeah. You know, okay, when you're not, you know, writing documentation or not worried about documentation, what do you do in a free time? What are your hobbies, if you can talk about those? I really wish I had the time. I have a son who is seven years old, oh, and the only okay. thing I love to do at that time is take a nap. Take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> 
Perfect. So you don't have any hobbies, but you have a lot of you know wish, a uh, lot of things on your wish list that yes. you maybe you could do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Raji, so much for coming here and talking to us today. And good luck with your endure with the documentation. Nobody's writing it. Nobody's reading it. <laughs> but we, we hope somebody will do the yeah. job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you, Sapnil. Thank you. Have a great day.